Hey guys, good morning. It's Friday. Glad to be with you this morning to share with you in God's Word. I'll give it a few minutes here. Well, not a few minutes, a few seconds to let you guys connect to the live feed. And let's see who's first in. I can't tell because names aren't popping up yet, but I see pictures. So it's, it's good to see you guys on this Friday. Nice chilly fall day. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 28 today as we spend time in God's Word. Just want to welcome you here. And uh, hey, I'll give you a heads up up front. If you'd like to pray uh, at the conclusion of our message today, just let me know. Maybe I can bring you on camera here, okay? So you just let me know. I'll let you pray about that for a moment. So you might have to get dressed if you're not. I won't bring you on camera if... <laughs> But anyway, so Matthew chapter 28, I want to spend a moment with you on the mountain with our master, Jesus Christ, this morning. Um, Matthew chapter 28, end of the chapter, starting in verse 16 today. I think it's, it's important that we remember who we are as God's people and what our mission is as we seek to follow Jesus. So we're going to spend a moment with our master on the mountain this morning. This passage comes as Jesus has risen from the dead and he's giving his disciples, the 11 that are there, uh, a commission, a mission to fulfill. And so um, as, we, as we spend time in his word this morning, we're going to remember what that mission is today and the confidence that we can have in that. So would you uh, read with me Matthew chapter 28, beginning in verse 16. Here it says, the eleven disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped. But some doubted. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So as we as we dwell on this passage this morning, it, there there are four assurances, four absolutes, I guess you could say, that guide us and encourage us in being faithful to the mission. So as as we would see this passage, Jesus told his disciples before he was to die uh, to go and meet them. Uh, when he when he was to raise to go and meet him on the mountain at, in Galilee, and so he directed them there, and um, and so they came to this mountain in Galilee. We don't know exactly which mountain it was, uh, but it was perhaps you know maybe the same mountain that he had spoken to them earlier earlier on in in Matthew chapters five through seven, where the Sermon on the Mount was. We don't know exactly, but Jesus directed them there to this mountain in Galilee. And this here, when, we, when they see, when they encounter the risen Lord Jesus here, they, they worship. And so one of the other uh, great evidences here that Jesus was not just a man, um, other than the fact that he had just risen from the dead, but that indeed he receives worship. He doesn't refute it, uh, but he, they, they see him and they worship as only the Lord is worthy of. And so this here just reminds us that indeed Jesus is God. Jesus is worthy of our worship. But then there are some that are still doubting. Some are still wrestling in their faith. Um, some perhaps are wondering, how can this be that our Jesus, who had just three days ago, um, well, it's probably longer than that at this point. We know that Jesus appeared to them over 40 days. Uh, so even during that time, Jesus appeared many times during that 40 days, they still wrestled, they still had doubts whether or not this, this could be true, that Jesus indeed had risen from the dead. Uh, but Jesus lovingly, uh, caringly, compassionately brings them near. He says, he, he came near and said to them these words. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, Jesus' desire to come near to you this morning, even amidst your doubts, even amidst your moments of faith, Jesus wants to draw near to you so that you would be near to him. And so, uh, and then he gives us these, wor this, this, these words to his disciples. Uh, he gives 
four absolutes again that really surround the central idea of making disciples. Um, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Uh, and then he, he gives the, in verse 19, uh, what should come as a result of that. Why, because Jesus has all of this power, he's giving them a mission. Uh, he has the ability to help them carry this out. And so he's, the mission is to make disciples. Disciple is a follower, a learner, somebody who's going to learn what Jesus has to say so that they would follow to trust and obey him. Um, but Jesus has the power, I would remind you, as we seek to introduce people to Jesus Christ, to tell them about the good news that Jesus died for their sins, that he rose from the dead to give them life, to, to give them a new life, an eternal and abundant life, a life free from sin and death, a life full of the presence of God now and forever. Um, Jesus has the power to make that possible. He demonstrated as he rose from the dead, and he, uh, he reigns even now as our king. So as we would, as we would think on that, that mission that maybe makes you a little bit um, uh, hesitant at time, maybe you'd be, be hesitant at time, remember that Jesus has the power to make it possible. Jesus has the authority, all the authority of heaven and on earth. Jesus reigns even today. Uh, he, he reigns as you're praying for those that you want to introduce to Jesus, those that are your neighbors uh, that you need to have that conversation with, those that are in your family that you need to share his love with. Uh, Jesus has the power to help you make that possible. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Christ. And so he gives us this commission to make disciples of all nations. That's kind of the second absolute. The first one was Jesus has all power. The second is he wants, he wants all nations to be made disciples of. That means no one gets left out. Every people group on the face of the planet is included in this mission. Whereas Jesus came originally to the people Israel, a specific people group at a specific time in a specific land, he's now commissioning his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, all people of the earth. Uh, we know that's a, that's a big number. Uh, uh, there's thousands and thousands of different peoples among the planet, and there are million, billions of people that that includes. And we are called to make disciples until the whole world hears. I'm thankful that we get to be a part of a church that's involved in sending out missionaries and commissioning new people in, in ministry. Uh, so whether it's uh, a new neighborhood or a new nation, we need to be about making disciples. Uh, we need to about uh, each of us personally involved in making disciples, taking those around us and introducing them to Jesus and helping them learn how to follow him. All people are included in this. All disciples, all of the 11 were here, and they were sent to all the nations. Um, so from uh, China uh, to Calgary uh, in Canada, you know, we, we go and make disciples to Canton, Michigan as well. You know, wherever we're at, we, we are called to make disciples and to make sure that the whole world hears. And then we see when we, as we make disciples, there are some components in that. Uh, we see baptism is, a, is a, an important step as we would teach people to follow Christ. We help them to take the step of baptism. That's a very important spiritual marker. I remember the day of my baptism. I hope you, you, if you were baptized, you, you remember yours. It's an important spiritual marker that marks our transition from death to life. Uh, as we go under the waters of baptism and come out, uh, we declare that we have been made new by Jesus Christ. And so maybe you need to take that step of baptism. Maybe you have yet to make your faith in Jesus public. Maybe that's the, the thing that you need to do today. Um, Pastor Wayne's going to be talking about that this Sunday. I hope you're there on Sunday to, to, to hear the, what baptism is about in more detail if you're considering that. Um, but then when we see what the baptism is in, it's in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, the name singular of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So here we have an example of the Trinitarian nature of God. Uh, that is, we baptize disciples in his name the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Of course, we know that's, that's Jesus. That is the Lord. We baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we teach them to observe everything Jesus commanded. 
so we don't leave anything out. Uh, we, Jesus has all the power. He has all authority. He wants us to go to all nations, and he wants us to teach them all things he commanded. So we uh, certainly would teach them uh, what it means of the salvation that, that comes to us by grace through faith in Jesus. But we teach them everything he commanded, and we know that has to do with loving God and loving our neighbor as ourself. Uh, so we teach them everything that's found in God's word and help them to understand it and live it out. And then finally, the, the final absolute is here is to remember that in all of this, Jesus is with us always. Uh, Jesus has all power. He's given us a mission to all nations. He wants us to teach them all things, and he is with us always. Uh, so so the, I think this is a nice couplet to the first absolute, which is that Jesus has all power, but he is the one who has all power is with us always. And so that is the, the assurance, the confidence that we can have is in this mission of making disciples is that he is with us always. That is, we don't need to fear. We can go boldly taking his word with us, sharing it, not worrying uh, of what we may our fears might be, but to know that the Lord is with us in this. There, there can be nothing that would stand against us, that Christ is faithful. He will be with us to help. Uh, and he indeed is the one that builds his church uh, so we can go boldly as we would make disciples. Now, I told you at the beginning, if one of you wanted to pray, I'll bring you on camera. Is anybody going to take me up on that this time? Anybody? Anybody? No? Just wave a hand if you can. Anybody? Okay, I'll give it five seconds. Okay, I know you're waking up. Let, let's pray together. One day we're going to get somebody on here. Let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for calling us to be your people. We thank you for bringing us from death into life. And Lord, giving us a responsibility, a stewardship in your kingdom to make disciples. Lord, to introduce people to you, to help them understand what you command. And Lord, you do that with us. You cooperate in us and through us with your Holy Spirit leading us and, and giving us your presence, giving us your power. Father, we, we want to be faithful to you today. So help us to, to look for those in our neighborhoods in our workplaces, in our schools that need to be introduced to you. Help us to be faithful, to communicate who you are and what you've done in our lives and why people need uh, to turn to you in faith, to know that there is a day of judgment coming and the only way of escape is through your son, Jesus. Father, I just ask that you would bless my brothers and sisters today in your word. Um, I, I pray that they would be faithful to you in this mission, that we can work together as your church. Uh, to, to make disciples of all nations. Father, I pray for our missionaries that are serving around the globe today, whether it's, uh, Lord, in, in faraway places or, or in, this, in our city. Lord, we, we need to be faithful to pray, pray for them as they lead out in, in helping to make disciples in new places. But Father, I pray for those that are even in our church that you're calling out to new endeavors, to new ministries, to new missions. Uh, Lord, that, that you would not um, let them, um, Lord, just to allow those, um, whatever you've placed on their heart to, to be set aside, Lord, but that you would indeed f uh, fan the flames of that, that desire that you've placed within them to make disciples and, and give them the power and the encouragement by your Holy Spirit to carry out that mission today. Father, we need your grace, we need your strength, and we thank you that you are faithful to us. Lord, we look forward to, to seeing many come to know you so that one day around your throne we may see those people from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation worshiping you in your holy temple. Father, we, we entrust this day to you and we praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, you guys have a great day. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday and I trust that you'll make the most of this day as you serve the Lord. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.